Now let's talk about a few tips for OpenCL performance and summarize what we have with OpenCL here. So, getting performance optimizations, this is at runtime. The big one here is really moving data back and forth, getting this data from the host, the CPU, to the device, the GPU. If you're over PCIe, we know that's slow and it takes a long time. So you want to transfer data once and then do lots of computation. So keep your data on the device as long as possible. Run as many kernels as you can before you have to move your data back and forth to the device. One of the approaches that works really well here are producer-consumer producer kernel chains. So you have one kernel that takes in the input and keeps its output on the GPU for the next kernel to use it. This prevents you from having to move data back and forth. Another big issue is kernel launch overhead. So the first time you go to launch a kernel, you have to compile it. Compilation can be incredibly slow. It can take tens or hundreds of milliseconds to compile things. Remember, you're running a full compiler here, and it can take a long time. So you want to make sure that you amortize this overhead with long-running kernels or lots of kernel executions. If you run a kernel exactly once, this first compilation is going to be a real problem. Another problem you have is with launch overhead. It can take a while to start up kernels. This is actually getting much better these days, but still every time you run a kernel, it takes some amount of time. So you want to make sure your kernels do a fair amount of work every time you run them. Remember up here, it's this getting data back and forth to the GPU is really the killer in performance. All right, so how about optimizations for the kernel? Well, the first one is memory accesses. So remember we saw how address co memory coalescing was very important for performance. You really want to optimize your code for that on the GPU. Some newer hardware is much more forgiving. You can do a better job of coalescing, but the more easily your accesses coalesce, the better performance you'll get. This is another reason why CPU and GPU code needs to be optimized differently. CPUs don't have any concept of coalescing, so for them this really doesn't matter and you want to focus on making the cache and prefetch work. Local memory is another big deal on GPUs. Remember, it has about 10 times the bandwidth of global memory. If you can take advantage of it, you can get much better performance, but you have to manage it manually and you have to watch out for bang conflicts between all your threads. So this is a pain to use, but gives you a significant performance benefit. We've seen examples earlier about how divergent execution can be a problem. It can be a significant problem depending on the number of threads you have and how divergent they are. Vectors can make a big difference on some hardware. So AMD hardware, AMD GPUs, and CPUs really benefit from vectors. So if you use OpenCL language to express vectors, you'll get the best performance on these devices. And you don't have to worry about NVIDIA devices which don't use vectors. OpenCL will just split your vectors up if it needs to. Finally, you can get a significant boost, about 2x, on things that do lots of math by using the fast or native variants of these things. And you need to remember that these ones are going to be faster, but they may be much lower precision. So you have to think carefully about where in your algorithms you can use them. All right, so let's come back to what we started with. What is OpenCL, honestly? So I said before it was a low-level language for high-performance, heterogeneous data parallel computation. Let's go through that again. So low-level. It is low level. You have to manually manage memory and parallelization, allocate things, choose global dimensions. You gotta do this all by hand. Language. Well, it's not really a language. It's more of a framework with C-like computation kernels. A language sort of implies something that I think of as being more elegant and more self-contained, and it definitely isn't that. For high performance, yeah, absolutely high performance, but only if your algorithm is a good fit for the hardware. So this is designed for GPUs. If your algorithm is data parallel, no problem. For heterogeneous computation, <coughs> it does do heterogeneous programming. So you can run the same code on a CPU or a GPU or an FPGA, but your performance isn't going to be best. So code is portable, but not performance. Finally, data parallel, yep, it's pretty much just data parallel. And that's because the hardware and software really only support that. OpenCL does support some concept of task parallel stuff on the GPU, but the task parallel support on GPUs today is really awkward and limited, and you don't get great performance with it. You really want to focus on doing data parallel computations. Okay, so the last thing we want to end here with is, is your application a good match for a GPU? So if you have all of these things in your applications, data parallel, computationally intensive, doesn't need global synchronization, but does need lots of bandwidth, is okay with single precision, and is okay with small caches. If all of these apply to your application, then it's a great match for a GPU. 
If any of these really don't apply, then you need to think carefully and you want to consider changing your algorithm to choose one that fits better into this pattern.